This week I've been drawing new sprites for the game and adding some features to the factory. I started off by updating the saw sprite. I brought it up to date with the new design for the conveyor belts I made last week, by lifting it up onto stilts and matching the belt colour to the darker grey of the conveyor belts. Now when everything is joined up in the game it all appears to blend smoothly, with the wooden stilts linking nicely. I'll probably be using this style a lot in the future as it really matches my vision for how the game should look. Since implementing the conveyor belts I found it frustrating that there's no way to see exactly what the item is at any given point on the conveyor belt. I decided to fix this by adding an indicator to the conveyor belt control panel which states the name of the object at any given point on a belt, if there is one at all. I initially had it set up to display next to the title on the control panel. It was quite simple at first, but after a bit of messing around I decided the best way of doing this would be to have a separate text box under the main title displaying the name of the item. I set that up in Unity and linked the text box to my code so that it would display no item if there was nothing on the conveyor belt. After updating the original code slightly, I got this working nicely, and it now shows whenever a conveyor belt is selected. I went to Oxford over the weekend so didn't spend any time on development but it was really nice to have a break and get away from technology for a bit. On Monday I got home and decided to move on and sort out those horrible purple lumberjack sprites so at least there's something that somewhat resembles a person. I started off on Pinterest as I've never drawn people either in pixel art or from an isometric perspective so I needed to see how others achieved that first. After a bit of research, I just gave it a shot, starting off with a black outline so I had some sort of guide to follow when I went back and added details. I started with the back of the lumberjack, as that's the sprite which will face north, which is the one I normally start off with. I mostly just coloured over the black outline, adding details such as the plaid pattern on the shirt and the axe in the hand. I then drew the south facing sprite by changing the angle of the hair and moving the axe to face towards the player. Kinda lazy, but it worked. I also messed around with drawing eyes but decided it looked best without. I've just drawn the male lumberjack sprite for now, just so there's something in the game that isn't a big purple diamond, but once I've had a bit more practice at drawing people I'll also be adding lumberjills, which I think might also have beards because it's funny. I tested that sprite and decided the colours were a bit off. I'd also forgotten the shadow which is probably the most important part of any sprite. Without it things look like they're just floating and haven't got any kind of anchor point in the world. Once I'd replaced the purple diamonds with the new sprites, they started gliding ominously around the space. First thing I had to fix was obviously getting them to face the way they were travelling. There's no walk animation yet, this is really just a first step before I get a bit more practice in drawing people and then animating them. Getting the lumberjacks to face the right way proved a bit more challenging than I initially expected, and for some reason the game just didn't want them to face north or south at all. I fixed these problems by changing how the game calculates the coordinates of employees in the world, and switched from using Unity's vector system to a simple coordinate system, where the most southwesterly tile is the origin. This is how most positioning in the grid is calculated anyway, so it didn't take much to add. I then moved on to getting storage buildings to receive items from conveyor belts, taking each item into its inventory, allowing for a complete, very simple factory system to be built. Next week I'm planning on implementing the splitter machine, which will divide a conveyor belt into two, so make sure to subscribe for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.